Now every now and again, you get a club in a bag that you just love. It becomes the go-to and uh, you've just got confidence in it every time you pick it up. Now don't get me wrong, success and failure, that sort of comes and goes, but right now, I have a club in the bag which I absolutely love and I think would be beneficial in many average golfers' bags. And that club is in fact a hybrid, but interestingly enough, it is a five hybrid. And that's really important. I think many golfers, myself included over the years, have predominantly gone for a three or a four hybrid in the bag. But the problem with those is, is that uh, they're strong lofted, I don't know, maybe 18, 19 to 21 degrees and they're still difficult to play in many situations whereas the five hybrid can be 24 25 degrees and it gives so much versatility in the game that for me they're a no-brainer to have in the back so in today's video i'm going to not look at one not two but yes as you can see three different five hybrids three that i consider to be pretty much the best that I've tried in all the testing that we've done so far. One of these happens to be in my bag and after this morning's testing, I might just have the wrong one in the bag. They've all got different shafts in, so look, it's a head to head as best as I can do it. It's not about finding out which is necessarily best in terms of uh, overall. It's about highlighting what each club maybe does a little bit differently and maybe why one would be more beneficial than the other. So first of all, what are those three? Let's start off with the one that I picked up in hand. It's from PXG, it's the 0311 XF. It's from the Gen 6 lineup. Now, let's go in, let's, let's re re reveal them all first of all. We've then got the Paradigm, and we've then got, I don't need to go and pick it up, we've then got the Ping version in terms of the G430. And they all do this very, very differently. Not just in terms of the date that we'll look at um, later on in the video, and we'll get to that very, very shortly. The obvious thing is they look very different. Now, what I'm gonna say is, I'm gonna put all three in terms of from the top line on screen for you now. And what you'll see is you've got a, you've got a choice to make visually, first of all. Well, the two to the left of picture are PXG being uh, to the left, Ping being center, they're very similar in terms of that matte crown. I actually like the score lines on the face of the Ping G430, the white score lines that is, because I think they frame the ball very much better than that of the PXG. And then on the other side, you've got that opposite look, which is high gloss finish. That again is gonna be preferential or not. And then you've got some really strong white score lines which I like on the Paradigm, and the reason I like them is not because of an alignment aid, but more because you see a lot of the face, and you see a lot of the loft on the face, and what I mean by that is when you, to me, when you see loft, it gives you a basic sort of um, confidence that the club is gonna pop the ball up in the air, and essentially that is one of the jobs that these are looking to do. So, We'll start off, like I said, I picked up the PXG Club. What does it, what does it do? Well, I'll hit a golf ball and we'll get some, uh, we'll start to get some feedback. Bit of a cutty swing, I'm not the best. Trying to change my swing on testing the tips right now. It's working, but it's uh, a work in progress. PXG, I think this lineup of fairway woods, hybrids and drivers is the best they've done in an all round capacity. It's got a great sound and feel. It launches the ball really high, and I mean really high. And I find it as a club, and this is the one that's been in the bag the last, well, this year really, launches the ball super high. I can kind of put a three quarter swing on it. I can put a full swing on it and I can vary the distance sort of 160. I can probably get up to 180 out of this thing. And it's very much a long iron replacement as all these are but in a way that it just allows you to have a little bit more confidence that this club will do it for you. You're not having to graft that you've got, let's say a five iron equivalent, maybe a six iron equivalent, then this kind of thing is giving you plenty of help and assistance. You've then got a hugely popular option, which is the G430. Now the G430 lineup to me, for me has been fantastic very difficult to criticize in any way. Now the ping thing, 
is this. That was a better swing to be honest with you and a better shot. Not going to affect the data that I collected earlier. But the ping is very different in its feel. It's still quite a bit, quite hard. It's always been a thing about the G lineup of series of product. It's massively improved, but it's still a hard feel. Now for a lot of people, and we'll hear another one, it's quite a confidence inspiring fire off the face. You feel like you've, well, when you've hit half decent ball, I seem to have come out the middle, you feel like that thing has fired out there. So the noise of the G430 line up can be off-putting for some, but for others it can be a real sense of encouragement like the ball has fired off there. But in terms of performance, between those swings we've just hit on camera, nothing majorly different. The only thing I would report is this. Hopefully you can see by the, the swing in terms of the speed and the effort, it's minimal. And that's why I like these clubs and that's why I think it's a really important video for a lot of average golfers is that I cannot understand why any golfer that is suffering in terms of slowish or slower swing speed doesn't introduce more of these in the long end of the bag because if you are swinging a ball of the club rather slower, the likelihood is you're not getting anything like in terms of performance what you should be doing out of your six, five and your four iron. And you, you, you won't see a difference because you haven't got the club head speed to generate what's required to get those performance benefits. Ah, really good ball. And again, it's great this, you know, because when you do the side, head to head, side by side, you really start to notice a difference. I say it in a lot of videos, but it surprises me. So we've just gone from a ping G430, which I describe as hard, We've gone into this paradigm, and honestly, it is the opposite end of the spectrum in terms of soft. They've really gone in a different route this year, Callaway with Paradigm, and like I said, it's very much a much more softer feel, very much more muted. It's just, it's weird. And you, you look at the ball, and the ball's still flying, and you think that you've hardly hit it. It's almost like when you hit a forged iron, they've somehow got that kind of real super soft feel into their hybrids. The difference for me, key difference, like I said, visually between all three, is forgetting what you see on the shelf, all very different, all going to be drawn, different magpies drawn to different things. But from above, um, the crown, I still prefer, unfortunately for me, fortunately, whatever you want to look at it, uh, unfortunately for Callaway, let's put it that way, I still prefer the matte finish and I'd be drawn to one of the other two. The surprising thing is, and I'll tell you this before we get to the numbers, is just how good, and I'd forgotten how good, this ping lineup is of G430 because oh, it just does this kind of thing so well. So whether that be, um, the driver of the G430, uh, fairway woods, seven woods, five woods, nine woods, into the hybrid section. I just think it's where ping excels. And like I said, I'd forgotten just how good this is. But the question is, they are different in terms of performance, but the question is, what was the difference? And for that, we need some Trackman data. Well, I hope you're enjoying these right now. We've done a little bit of a series of head-to-heads. -heads. I think it's important to keep on um, giving people some kind of guide in terms of at least what they've done in my hands. And um, there's been some interesting findings really over the last few weeks. And the same in this, um, I think what I'll do, I'll throw the data up of the averages for all three. Um, and we'll start with we'll start with the we'll start with the PXG a 150 what's that say 159 carry 78 club head speed ball speed of 113 52 spin um, the interesting bit 18 launch 87 peak height and that descent angle is 46.1. Now I hit a couple of balls with every club with a sort of 
81, 82 mile an hour club head speed, which I removed from the equation. So there is a lot more you can do with these clubs in terms of distance wise. But this was, like I said, a very much a controlled swing, trying to keep everything in around that sort of same club head speed. Uh, so those numbers are all good, very efficient. Uh, when you think of replacing your 160 club out of the bag and those kind of comparisons in terms of spin numbers, in terms of descent angles, that set of numbers to look at from PXG, brilliant tick all the boxes then go to the paradigm uh 155 carry 76.9 club head speed so that was down to a little bit slower swinging with the paradigm uh, a 112 ball speed which was again very efficient from the club head speed 54 spin slightly higher spin number and a 17 launch and a 44 land angle so for me, the number's probably not quite as good there when I'm just comparing PXG to the Paradigm. Forgetting the distance, I'm more interested in the kind of launch angle and that descent angle is key for me, which I'd be perhaps a little bit negative towards in terms of that Paradigm number. But then we go into the um, ping number, uh, which is really interesting. 163 carry. So I think that's considerably longer. I mean, four yards longer. But here's the interesting bit. With a 76.9 club head speed. So, and a 114 ball speed. So just look at the difference between Paradigm and Ping. Exactly the same club head speed, but with, on an average club head speed, but with a almost eight yard gain in terms of different uh, distance. A two mile an hour or two and a half mile an hour gain in ball speed. Spin number drops off a little bit, but we're still maintaining a real good launch and a descent angle that's very, very similar again. Now, it's a, it's a difficult one, this, because it just depends what you're looking to replace, but I think the ping numbers are superb, even though I'd like to see it launching maybe a tad higher, and I don't know what the uh, overall numbers have done in terms of what they've each individual number has done in terms of adding effect on the overall averages that's the only criticism i've got right now i said to you i've got the pxg5 hybrid in the bag it's been in the bag all year i love it super versatile super flexible i must admit when i was hitting a ping i was loving just how far it was going and just how it was firing off the club face that's when i said i was questioning if i had the right one i then just look at the spin number at descent angle and still maybe maybe I am okay with what I've got in the bag, you know, but it's not about me. It's about three different hybrids there from three different brands, all with um, five hybrids, 24 degrees, and they do a superb job. And I don't think you can really, like I said, pick a winner. If we hit another 15 shots and maybe it'd be slightly different outcome, I don't know, but for me, it's uh, little tiny differences in between each one that will maybe take you one way or another when you do your custom fit and it could be totally different numbers obviously to mine. But all I will say is get those long irons out of the bag and get this kind of thing. Five hybrids I just think are an absolute no brainer and can help you in so many situations and so much more versatile. And no one wants to pay a five iron out of the rough, but play a five hybrid and you've got a bit more of a chance of getting it out there. You can use it dinking in and around the greens as chip and runs. They've just got, you can play it off the tees on the par threes, second shots, par fives, par fours. I just think that uh, the bigger tailing amongst this head to head is the type of club is uh, really important to be in your bag or at least consider it and try it next time you get a chance. Anyway, that's my feedback. Let me know if you've got five hybrids in the bag or are you still wanting to keep those longer irons in there. Uh, always interested in your feedback. And also let me know what sort of head to heads you want to see. I've really been enjoying doing this little bit of a series at looking back over the year and putting a few of these the uh, against one another and seeing which comes out on top or at least which are the differences. Right. Thanks as ever for watching. I'll see you all soon.